So John chapter 20, one year ago, this morning I asked Michelle, one year ago, we were in the state of Oregon. Oregon's a beautiful state. It just, it has some majestic aspects to it. The, the tree lines, the hills, the rocks, it's very raw, we would say. The Pacific Northwest has an element that kind of, uh, then kind of, it does communicate to you what perhaps many a pioneer American felt or faced when these groups of people were coming over from the east. Um, the westward expansion, as we talk about in history, you know, what the government was doing to motivate them to do that, that's a whole other topic. But nevertheless, there were sincere people that um, put their stakes out west and moved out west and took those risks to fight the elements, uh, put their trust in God to deliver them. Um, there was conflicts with Native Americans and other issues, starvation. You got to the Pacific Northwest, though, but there was some incredible beauty. And Oregon just reminds me of that. So I thank God that we had a stint to stay in Oregon to see that beauty of what God created out there. But one year ago, I realized on Easter, we were in Oregon. And it was because of uh, some difficult circumstances. And, but yet it was Easter. And I thank God that we had some Christian friends to fellowship with at the time. We had some good times together. And that Easter morning, we were worshiping together. And I was reminded of a passage of Scripture that we looked at that morning. That's where you're at in John 20. I'm going to begin reading uh, verse 10. John 20, the Bible says, Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turneth herself and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and the, that he had spoken these things unto her. And for just a few moments, I would like to focus upon this lady, this Mary in the scriptures on this Easter day as we celebrate the resurrected Christ. God, who became man, who conquered death, hell, and the grave, gave us life. And it's interesting to me that he chose this lady for this story at this time. Turn with me over to Mark, if you will, just a few pages away in Mark 16. Mark 16. So you're in John, you know, pass up Luke and go back to Mark. Same story, okay? It's what we call a parallel passage, right? Because the Gospels often overlap from different perspectives. So in Mark 16, that's what we have of John 20. Here's what the Scripture says. Verse 9, Mark 16, verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom He had cast seven devils. Verse 10. And she went and told them that had been with Him, as they mourned and wept, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. That's tough to swallow. So Mark's got a truncated version here of the story in three verses, right? We have Jesus, we have Mary, then we have the disciples' response to her testimony. So it's a, it's a little stiff for Mark here, right? But it helps fill in the gaps for John. John gave us more about Mary and her encounter with Christ Mark gives us the story in a, in a summary, in a truncated form, but we learn more here. We learn that they believe not. We learn a little bit more. The Bible's telling us about who Mary was. 
Do you understand now why she was at the tomb? Look at what Christ had done for her. He had forgiven her much. So naturally, after he dies on the cross and is carried away, she's the first one there. Mary is an amazing person. And hey, man, if we can't humble ourselves and learn from this lady, whom God chose to be the person that he showed himself to first after he rose from the dead, then we need to take Doug's advice. We need to humble ourselves and learn some things. So let's learn from Mary. Here's the first thought that I had. Um, Mary was asked, woman, why weepest thou twice? Why weepest thou? Of course, I think, humanly speaking, we know why she was weeping. She had seen them murder and torture and kill Jesus Christ, her Savior and her Lord. And not maybe having that full understanding. You know, I don't know her heart and her mind completely. That would be foolish to presume. But she's still not fully understanding that he's going to rise. She knows he's dead. She knows where they laid him. But look at her actions. They teach us about her heart. She goes to the tomb. Active worship, knowing his body, find out what's going to happen to see what the Lord would do. And she weeps. Hey, let me ask you, Christian, what's in your life in these days could we say is causing you to weep, to struggle, to cry? The Lord knows. He asked Mary, why do you cry? Why do you weep? Why do you hurt? He asks us the same question, doesn't he? Look at the Psalms. Look at King David. God was man, was he not? Hebrews remind us in chapter 4, For we have not an high priest, high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in like points tempted, right? Yeah. Yet without sin. I think of a second thing we can learn from Mary. If you look down, verse 15, we brought up that question that Jesus said. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. What devotion this lady shows us to her Lord. Mary was a true disciple. Is that not your heartbeat? I know it's mine. I remember one day Brother Jake just saying, Brother Chad, you know, I'm still wondering if I've met a true disciple. I, and I'm not quoting him. Brother, don't let me misquote you but, or, or you know, misrepresent you. But I, I saw your heartbeat. You're looking for good examples of Christians who are true disciples. Like it comes out in every part of their life like this Lady Mary. It's not just what they say. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yes, I love Christ. Yes, I love my local church. But it's what they do day in and day out, week in and week out, under the grind. You see them that they are like Mary. Even in the difficult days, they're seeking Christ. Seeking Christ. They're seeking Him. What seekest thou? So, Christian, what do you seek? Are, are, is our seeking prioritized right? Hey, I'll go ahead and admit there's just days and times when mine's not. <laughs> it's to, I, it, I need to be reproved. <laughs> I need to be corrected. Isn't that what the Scripture does for us? Isn't that the whole goal of the daily reading, right? Pastor's constantly admonishing us, did you read your daily proverb? Why? Because he knows, we all know that that's going to hold us to the Scriptures. It's just an anchor point, right? If we'll just put in that 10 minutes to read that proverb to the day. You know what? That verse reminds you of something else. That leads you over to more instruction. If you're humble, you're going to receive it. And that's going to make connect dots to other Scriptures that you've read before. Scriptures that you've read before and you didn't catch it before. Verse 15, he said, Whom seekest thou? And then, if you will, let me point out a third thing about Mary. And this really focuses on the Lord. Verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, or Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Once again, the testimony of her lips is what she was. But I think it's interesting that the Lord called her name. Hey, Christian friend, God knows your name. You are unique to Him just like Mary was. Don't forget that. On this Easter Sunday, remember that Christ arose. He arose for you. 
I want my children to know that he arose for them. Every one of them. And we got a pastor, right? It's the Morgan mob, right? <laughs> we come up with those silly names, right, for big families. So. Christ rose for each and every one of us. Hey, that'll carry you through your day. He knows your name. He calls you by name through this book, through the instruction that he's giving. Verse 18, last verse here if you'll look with me. Verse 17, Jesus gave her some instruction, touch me not, and you notice he says, I ascended to my father. He gave her a little bit of prep. He's, he's, he, this is the lady that's seeking him out, okay? She's the one that has the heartbeat for the Lord. So obviously she had a heart to believe, so the Lord's giving her information. He's filling her up, you know? He's asking her hard questions, but he's calling her by name and he's giving her good info. He's letting her know, Mary, it's me. Hey, I got a job for you, Mary. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, just like he had commanded her. This is an obedient disciple here. And that he had spoken these things unto her. And of course, we read back in Mark, right? The disciples didn't even believe her. So you get the impression that for a period of time, the only soul believing in the resurrected Lord could have been this lady called Mary. She was there. Did the Lord use her? Oh, absolutely. She was obedient. So, for Easter, I think it's very appropriate. How could it not be that the Lord chose this person to include in great detail in the moments directly following His bodily resurrection from the grave to give us a great example of how we can be a better disciple, how we can be better soul winners, better teachers of the truth in humility to our family, our co-workers, our neighborhoods, our friends. Mary helps us do that here in John 20. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for rising from the dead and conquering the things that only you could do, sin and hell and the grave. Thank you for this lady's example. We love you. Please um, bless the next preacher. Fill him with your spirit and help us to learn from him and from the scriptures in Christ.